All right, what up, YouTube fam? Something a little different this time. This time, I'm going to be reviewing my first 1-6 scale figure. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say it's my first. I've bought in little things before, um, but this this is my first actual figure. This is the Sideshow 6 scale Batman. Let's look at the box right here. Batman, some bats. There, nothing. Other side, Batman, some bats on the back. Yeah, very nice picture rendition of Batman. Not much. There we go. Some eyes, the face. What appears to be some scaling on the costume. I don't think the figures can have that. Sideshow collectible. Batman, Warner Brothers, DC Comics. All right. Call us toll free, yada yada. I'm not going to read all that. But this is the shoebox design. All right. I'm going to try and move up a little bit. Keep my camera straight. There. Shoebox designs means that the figure will slide out like a fresh pair of kicks. All right. On the inside. <clears throat> some more Batman. Some pictures. We got your grapple gun, your bat belt, your bat of bangs. Your bat face, all the things that come in the bat box, I'm sure. See more than enough reviews to know what to kind of expect. I, this isn't the first time I thought about getting the sixth scale. I'd thought about it back when Sideshow announced Wolverine. When they showed off Wolverine, Punisher, Deadpool, I was all hyped. If you look at my Facebook page, I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to get these. But I ended up not getting too into it because of a wonderful company called Mezco. Which released their soft good figures in a 112 scale, which are phenomenal. You know, they a lot of people say they're like miniature hot toys, but in a way, they're better, and then in a way, they're not. They have their ups and downs. Like, uh, you're not going to get the amazing detail in the face or in some of the clothing, but you still do get really good detail at half the size, at less than half the price, and a lot of good accessories. And of course, they're in a scale where if you collect, uh, 112 stuff. It's more to it. You know, they fit with Marvel Legends and stuff, yada, yada, yada. But this, uh, as, as the one, as they've gained popularity, a lot of companies have begun to uh, move into the realm of the 112 scale soft goods, meaning that there will be to a point where there will be more customization options. There are some really good customizers out there that do great work. Tony Myers one does amazing one six scale stuff and one um one twelve scale stuff. You know, but once once the market expands, you know there'll be more parts out there. I personally have contributed because I've broken apart figures and put the parts out there into the market for people to buy to use for customs and stuff. So there's the figure that was on the top on the bottom shell we see all the accessories here your great stands your batarangs your ropes your guns your stand all that other great juju i'm going to pull this out and i'm going to move i'm going to try and get i'm going to get on the other side of the camera because this is such a big figure i got to be pretty far away so it's kind of stopping me from being all up in the action. But I will put this down there where I can reach it. I'll move around. And I'll get my Vanna White on. Give me one sec. All right, here we go. Okay. While well, I take the rest of the stuff out of the box, I'm just going to say, uh, the reason I did decide to go and get into the 112 game, I mean the 1-6 scale 12-inch game, was because... I had a whole lot of six inch figures, like a ton of Marvel Legends, and I sold off a bunch. I sold off maybe like 80 a couple years ago to get into Mezco right before it really blew up. We've been into their second year of really producing a lot of stuff. And then I'd sold more and more. This is probably my fourth lot where I just said I got so much stuff, I gotta kinda do away with it. And so I just put on eBay, sold a whole lot, and decided to use some of that money to get into some of the uh, 112 
I mean, damn it, one six scale, 12 inch figures. I keep doing that. Um, because I'm not going to be going as hard as this as like you can with like $20 figures. But I figure if I'm going to buy something, I'll make it nice. And then uh, I'm going to try and maybe focus on some dioramas. You know, we're just going to get a few really nice pieces here and there. Uh, this guy I've got, I've got the Sideshow Superman, which I'm going to do a review on following this one. And then I have Harley Quinn on her way in the mail. I should have her tomorrow, Monday. And then, yeah, we'll take it from there. All right. So real quick, I'm going to go over the figure and then I'm going to move the camera and zoom in on the accessories. So right off the bat, you're going to see that this figure has got just a really nice blue to it. If you're a fan of the gray and blue, then this is where you're going to be at. Because there are other figures. This is the Gotham Knight. This is an older figure. There's Gotham Knight, which is black. That figure has three heads and interchangeable face plates. This guy just has two heads. All right. But very nice. Blue. The blue, they did a pretty good job of matching the blue to the cape. If we get close, you'll see. If we get close enough, if I'm in there and focused, make sure I'm focused. There's some shading. It's a little darker, a little lighter, so they probably airbrushed that on there. Some people complain about this being like a slightly older looking Batman. I uh, have already ordered a head from a customizer. It should be on its way in. And then when I get it, I'm going to paint it up. It's a Batman Hush variation. So once I get that, if I can paint it and not muck it up, I hope not, it's expensive, um, I'm going to throw that on there. Okay, I'm going to start recording this again because at some point the camera shut off. I didn't even know what I had missed, but um, I found a few things out while I was sitting here messing with it, talking to myself. All right, so real quick, I'm going to start from the top and work my way down, all right? First, you're going to notice is this really awesome head sculpt. You get two head sculpts. It, you didn't hear a pop because I already had it off. It's not magic. It is on there securely. I actually had pulled the ball peg out because this is a double-sided uh, ball peg. So there's a ball up here and one down there, which is really cool because it adds for a lot of motion. You get at the top and then the head will have more motion. Okay. Let's get in here. Let's get all up on these two grizzled-looking Batman heads. All right, Batman's all beat up. Now you get the long-eared and the short-eared. Pretty much the same thing, same expression here. Well, here more like just butt cheeks. Here more furrows in the brow. So this head definitely has more furrows in the brow and the longer ears. All right, they both come to a point, not up and slightly cut to the back. They're just both pointy. Just one is longer than the other. One thing I didn't know but found out: your mouth plates come out, which is really cool because they are both done so well it's pretty seamless and the way you get in there just a little hole in the back it's round which is nice and simple round you can't really mess up round not square no slots so you can uh have angry mouth i tasted something really spicy nasty face over there and then this one here all right and that's where my that's actually pretty good i'm going to uh switch back though and put this mouth on the other head because I, I think I kind of like the length of these ears a little bit better and I definitely like this head with this mouth better I like the more stoic looking mouth this grimace over here yeah it's all right they're trying but it's just kind of kind of weird so we'll put this off to the side if I can get it back in there, there we go put it off to the side now, a couple cool things I'm going to talk about here. You'll notice how the drape of the cape, this is like all the way down. Batman is completely closed up. You can't see in there at all, except for a little spot right there. But don't be a nitpicker, all right? Nobody likes a nitpicker. That's really cool. You can't do this with Mezco, and I'll explain to you why. It's because this cape is in several pieces where the Mezco capes are all in one piece that kind of like comes together around the neck. These lines aren't just for decoration. This is where the different parts of the cape are stitched together quite nicely on my dad and they come all the way down to the points here all right now there's no wire in this cape but still done very nicely you'll see it's kind of like a satiny on the inside but it looks it's got some kind of coating i guess on the outside that makes it look almost uh like leather and because of those six sections 
There's one on both sides of the shoulder, allows it to fold over the shoulder. And then this piece folds over there, and then you have your two in the back, all right? Easily comes off. And then you have the body, and the body's nice because uh, I had to do some uh, pulling and tugging. But this is also in several pieces. All right, just stitch up the side. And it looks like the arms are a separate piece that's sewn in as well. So you get a tighter fit there and it allows them to pull the back and the thing and sew it up here together. All right, so they didn't have to make it like the piece with the arm and yada yada. It's two separate pieces sewn up from here, you know? And the shoulders, you get another piece and that allows a nice tight fit, but also allows them to give Batman kind of a turtleneck so that this flows up into the head. Same with the cape, which is really, really cool. I wouldn't have known that just from looking at it, um, how they did it. I'm just admiring the fact that it's done so well and it looks so seamless. Let's pop our head back on there. All right, and nice, satisfying snap. And now once the head is up there, everything's tucked under, your mouth falls off. <laughs> and Bat goes, he had a hole for a mouth. It was terrifying. Batman's in there. All right, now you can pull this back over his shoulders pretty easily. All right. And now we have the Dark Knight himself standing up. All his glory. All right. Now I'm going to start going over uh, the figure, and I'm going to get to the accessories and try and knock this out. This is kind of a soft rubber here in the chest. This is a nice body. Nice kind of muscular for Batman. It looks good. Shoulders are very pronounced, very bulgy. But the arm only well, the arm goes out to the side, about that far, a little less than uh, 90 because it wants to come back down. But you have an upper bicep swivel, so you can kind of work around that. Nice big uh, triceps there. But yeah, it wants to go out there, rotate here. And again, whenever you rotate an arm, you can just roll the costume around it as you go. So we don't end up with any folds. All right. That swings. You hear that ratchet. It does go up. And then you can fall out with the mouth again. Hmm. Come on. I don't think I'm going to have a problem him being on a shelf and not falling out. Just whenever I move it. But the arm will come all the way up. You can ratchet back down. I can just adjust the costume. The arm gives us about a little less than 90. I assume it's because the bat gun's in the way. Arms are pretty bulky. Now this is very nice. You can kind of see the wrinkles and it looks like the gauntlet is stitched. And you have your little bat prongs on the other side. One, two, three. It looks like the end one is a little bit longer than the other two. And this is a separate piece, so it can rotate on its own. Alright. Now the wrist moves all the way around, in, out, and uh, well, definitely a separate piece. What's nice, you know, other than that falling off, but we can look at it and see this is a soft rubber, and that has a little dog hair on it. This is a soft rubbery little material. But the hands, each hand has its own ball peg in there already. So all, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of his hands. How many hands are we talking about here? I got seven down here, two fists on the Batman. So nine hands all have their own individual ball peg, which is pretty cool. Pretty nice. And we can check and see how this is done. See how that, since it's off. How they did that, bunched it up, got it in there, but it does move around separately on its own. The back gauntlet just slides and fits over there. And there's a little space that widens at the end, and that's how you're able to uh, pop that in. Okay, so that's how the hands work. I like the bat symbol. It's like all the Batman have different bat symbols. This one's pretty nice. The belt is a soft goods material. All right. But in each pouch actually opens up their Velcro, so these are like a canvas material. The belt is a harder plastic. You get down to his bat briefs, which are separate from the costume. Made in this uh, very nice material. Looks like the same material as the cape. And sewn in different pieces, probably so they can get the best fit. Front to back. Batman's got a bigger pouch in the back, and it opens. And 
And then, can you put stuff in there? Hmm. Looks like... Huh. That's cool, I guess. I guess the belt is customizable. It looks like when I opened it, I don't know if it was sewn and it came off, but that's not that big a deal because that's what it is. It's uh, like that. <clears throat> You'll see. Looks like there might be a piece of cardboard in there. And it's just up, and that's down there. And they're all, they all seem to be Velcro. It looks like it might have had a little bit of a Velcro. Yeah, it looks like this one might have been sewn and just came off. I don't know. But that's not really that big of a deal. Because back there, you're not going to see it. I'm not going to be messing with that. And I'm not going to be sliding these pouches around anywhere. They're all going to stay kind of where they are. All right. But I think you can pull this apart and unbuckle it somehow. I'm not really going to mess with that. I'm just going to leave that on. And we can slide it down to cover there all right legs look very nice down to his bat boots which fit very nice very tight one thing i always thought when i look at these figures because i know some hot toys you don't have uh articulation down near the ankle but this figure does the boot hinges down and up it's done so well you can't even really notice it goes down up all around you get like what feels like 360 degree motion as you can see the belt i mean the boot is sliding around because it is loose which is nice which gives you more option for standing the details in the boots are there very nice on the top on the sides the back where are we at with the back of the boot can't even see my boot the boot and the bottom of the boots looking like he's rocking a pair of tims all right quick we'll move into some articulation on the legs because we already did the upper thing let's work our way down let's see that here a little bit not so much forward so not so much forward a little bit back and that's where your upper is upper is more like a side to side for a twist not so much back lower that back pouch is giving me problems i guess i'll sew it back on on the lower seems like you can get a little bit more to the front a little bit more to the back. Not so much front. Definitely more back. Alright, so that's what you got there. Your legs come out pretty wide. About that wide. And you can see that they just kind of want to slide back down a little bit. But that's how wide you can get. This leg seems to be a little bit loose. Forward, about that much. You can see it is creasing up the material here. I don't know how that would react over time. I don't know. Um, I'm sure this will hold up pretty decently. Some of the Mezco figures of uh, that fake leather pleather material they put on there over time that sticks. And um, if you pull a figure out of a pose like that, it tends to tear. I, I haven't seen or heard anything about Hot Toys, but then again, uh, or Sideshow. I did the 12-inch scale figures, but I'm just getting into this. I don't think that would be an issue, though. All right. Well. The knees appear to be double jointed, so I get that much out of the knees. And people advise you to kind of give it a little tug up as you bring it back down, so you don't have any bunching. You don't want your uh, your joints to pinch your costume. There's a company called uh, Fiken or Fison, P H I C E N. They make bodies in a sixth scale that are one solid piece, seamless. Kind of like rubber with a steel skeleton. I'm going to look into getting some of that. They run from like around $70 to $90. Different sizes, different bulks. And their largest, tall, lanky size actually comes in a uh, a brown. Hey, you got a brother. All right. And that is the figure from top to bottom as far as articulation. So pretty cool. All right, Batman. Now let's look at those accessories, huh? I'm going to move back around so that I can get the camera closer. And we can look down and see what we are working with. Huh? <laughs> Actually, let me talk about this stand. I've never worked with this kind of stand before. I know some figures have stands like this. This is actually pretty tall. So you got your base here. It's a hexagon. A little dent there. It doesn't open. They screw together, but it doesn't open. So it's not like a pull-out drawer for your accessories, which seems to be something I think... Uh, figure art just started doing this is a circle fits right in there come to the top and these slide out with the two wires that are 
how are you boys doing? You're weird, right? Let me see. I'm, I'm fit. There you go. They open up like that, and the reason they're loose and going is because, as you see, they want to be in a V. And as you slide them down, they want to close, and that's what's going to clamp on the gear. You get the same thing here. Smaller, much smaller, but this is meant to, I guess, grab the crotch, get them in a little, in the crotch and support the crotch, and this can go around the waist. This is nice if you want to have the figure, I guess, uh, up in the air, higher than normal, doing some kind of uh, flight pose. That's good. Just not too high out of that there. Somewhere right around there, and this could go around the waist, and that's supposed to, I suppose, ugh, support your figure. I'm going to move that all to the side. I have no idea what I would do with that. Probably going to experiment with that a little bit later. All right, let's look down and see all of our glorious bat accessories. are we working with? Um, Batman is a billionaire, so he's got money to burn. And he uses that money to come up with all these cool toys. That is the instructions to a Figma. Good thing I found that. I actually just shipped that out. I'd probably want those instructions. <clears throat> so we already looked at our heads. Now we'll see our hands. Batman has two fisted hands. He's already rocking. Over here, you see me dropping his open hands. <sighs> Dog hair. You see nice detailing on these gloves. Got your little V pattern. The little bump out to the knuckles, I assume, so that when he punches, he can inflict maximum pain on the insides. These are clappy hands. Oh, Jesus, I love you, Jesus. And, you know, got your little going to church Sunday hands. <clears throat> Now here, these hands appear to not so much be trigger fingers. I suppose this could be a trigger finger since he has his little gun. This one, so he's have a little bit more gappage here. So these could be trigger hold, trigger finger hands or battering holding hands. If I can finagle and get a battering to hang out in there. I don't know. That looks weird. I guess if you did it right, there's really no, it's just a top finger. The buck stops there. So I suppose these could be a, as a flexible finger, so you could probably, well, if the rest of this hand won't open, I don't see him fitting a, any kind of gun in there. This is a trigger finger hand, because that's got more of an opening. So if you had a gun possibly fit in there, but this one looks like it may hold the batarang better, because it goes all the way down. Too far down. Look at me trying to figure this out while I'm. Hmm. So, we'll come back to that hand when we get to one of his weapons. Here, an open palm hand. Again, another hand that could be used to hold a pistol. This finger doesn't have quite the same cut, but it definitely is wider. So, you could put things in this hand for sure. Like this screwdriver looking thing. What the hell is this to? Hmm. I really wish this box would have come with some sort of instructions. I don't think I missed them, so yeah, no. Just kind of winging it. Uh, and then another hand, I'm gonna assume this is the battering holding hand because this one looks very similar to this one. You got the open finger, the rest of the fingers are closed so you can't fit anything in there. Alright, yeah, it definitely looks like this is going to be... Don't focus on them, focus on me. These are going to be for holding your batarangs. That's what we're going to go with. Because this is your Captain Planet hand over there. Smooth from one hand to the other. I totally meant to do that. Not a green lantern ring, but a ring made of kryptonite. So you got your little rock in there. The four little prongs holding it in. And they put a little green... uh green paint around it to show that it is giving off light. It's lighting up Batman's hand. So he keeps this in one of his pouches. We all know he always carries a kryptonite ring and a lead line pouch so he can give Superman the hurting. Out of your four batarangs you get, 
Three of them look similar. Three of them are these small little batarangs, all the same design, yep. And you get this one that looks like it has a razor's edge to it. All right, these are made of plastic and not metal. So the other accessories, this mystery thing, I cannot figure out what that is. Let me see if it goes to something else. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, okay. I see now. <laughs> Some assembly required. This goes onto there. All right, am I, am I doing this right? Pull it off camera real quick and slide that in. Yeah, girl, you like that. That goes into there. Dog hair. Just so you know, he's like a some kind of Labrador Poodle mix. More lab than Poodle because he sheds. What's happening here? All right. So these cut these go slide up and down like this. But these appear to be some kind of a grappling hook thing. So I don't know if they're supposed to sit flat like that, but they have blades, so you can see when they open them like that, the edges are painted silver to make it look as if they are some kind of bladedness, bladedness going on now. All right, but this is for when you are in your gun, and your grappling hook is in there, all right, before you fired, and then this... But the wire is for after you fired. So you could put this back in there and extend your wire. And see, this is a little bit longer, but the same black point on the end is meant to go inside of there. I'm not going to do that because I don't need this shooting. I don't need Batman pointing at anything. But you can always have him pose like he's going to shoot somewhere. Let's take that out and let's see which hand we can get to fit in here. So you're staring at nothing. I'm staring at this. This is made of plastic. Let's get some nice detail on it. See some black shading on there, some silver paint to give it that look of being used and abused, dropped and banged up more than one time. Right. The rotation, which makes it like, all right, that's where the cable would be stored. Now let's grab a hand. Let's see if we get lucky with our first hand here. Looks like we're getting somewhere. The soft, pliable nature of the hands is kind of almost allowing me to get in there and do something. Wow, this blue looks really nice on this camera. So yeah, I think on my first go, I found the hand that this goes into. That's not bad. So you could have Batman whipping this out. And this looks like this is left hand. I think he's only got this hand on the left because this one is more round. Batman taking the tumble. He's like, look at the back of my head. He's trying to show me. No, that one. Just stand back there and chill, sir. Let me rock in the table. Yeah, I don't think any of his other hands, this one is round, you could probably put something in there if you ever want to give him something to hold, like a pipe, because this is also a left hand, and these other two don't go all the way down to the end with their cut, so these probably are for batarangs, which I can't seem to fit in there, and your kryptonite ring, and your karate chops, or your diving, your swimming, you know, your open palm, your slapping robin hands, even one could call them, alright, so that's it for the accessories. So I made quite the mess, but that's it for Batman's accessories. Now the front part is finding somewhere to store them. I'll focus back here on Batman himself. And we're going to say that's that's everything. That's everything that came in the box. That's, that's all she wrote. Before I go, you can witness me try and put Batman on the stand. Now, as you saw, there are a couple things. Um, the mouth kept falling out as I was messing with it, but that's not that big a deal because this is not really something I'm going to be playing with. He's going to find a pose. He's going to stay in that pose until I change him again. <clears throat> that back pouch is a little weird. That that came. It looks like it was uh, sewed up. And when I was messing around back there, 
I pulled it. This is not Velcroed. This sounds like it is Velcro. This piece, not so much. So I'll probably just seal that one. And this one's coming off too. So it looks like they were stitched together, just not super hard. And you can see that it was done before they painted it. That's why this is uh, so much lighter. They must have sewn that down and then weathered it. But I'll just take care of that on my own. That's not anything I'm going to cry about. <clears throat> All right. Like I said, um, moving into this scale is new territory for me. But I really want to start working on some dioramas. Just in the beginning, some simple brick work, brick, 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 some brick work. <laughs> Doing some, some, uh, scenes. Almost like a city thing since, you know, I got Batman. Maybe some gothic stuff. That's actually really cool. And I wouldn't mind displaying my Batman in a pose like this. I think this is some, uh, Oh, you can't even see what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm over here like, yeah, this looks really nice. Yeah, I don't think I'd mind having my Batman like that. It looks really cool. Unless I, can figure, unless I can figure out a mod to get this cape to open up super wide like that. But even without that, it drapes so nicely. If that's that. I think I'm going to take a picture of that and use that for this video. All right, guys. Thank you uh, for tuning in and watching me fumble around for these 30 minutes. Up next, I'm going to try and do uh, Superman. Hopefully, it goes a little smoother. All right. Thanks, guys. Peace. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, go back. Uh, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. So on those rare occasions when I do have to up a new video, you can be aware and check it out. All right, guys. Now, thanks. Peace.